Why is a chirp signal used in radar? Well, let's think about a basic pulse radar, which sends a signal for a finite amount of time and then waits for the bounce back. It then has to determine from the bounce back the delay, the round trip delay to the target. And that can be challenging when the bounce back comes back with a low power and when there's noise. You need to be able to match up the transmitted signal with the received signal and find the delay offset. It's also difficult if there is a distributed target with a number of reflection points off the target, so not just one reflection point. And also, if you're sending over this period of time, if there are multiple targets that are close together, then they can have multiple received waveforms that are all overlapping, and that is gonna be difficult to separate. Well, let's think about this signal in the frequency domain. And this is a rect function multiplied by a sine wave. So in the frequency domain, you're going to be having a sync function convolved with the impulse at that center frequency, FC. And this is, for the types of pulses to send enough energy, this is a narrow band waveform. It's got all of those challenges that we talked about. What we would like to do, especially for thinking about multiple targets, is to make this time as short as possible. Then we're gonna be able to distinguish between multiple targets that are close together. So in this case, instead of sending this waveform, we would want to send just a very sharp delta function. And then we're getting incredible time resolution, infinite time resolution, if this is an exact delta function. Now let's think about that in the frequency domain. Well, that is flat in the frequency domain. So all frequencies are included. It's a very wide band signal. What are some of the challenges with this? Well, you've got to have this be able to be sent with enough power to receive the signal and see it in the bounce backs. And that means you're taking all the power that was transmitted over this time period and putting it just instantaneously into the impulse. And that has many practical problems in terms of the dynamic range limits of the amplifier because the instantaneous power will be so high. So what can we do as a compromise between these two? And that's where we look at the chirp signal. Chirp stands for compressed high resolution pulse radar. And this is what a chirp signal looks like. So as time goes on, the frequency increases. So why is this a good waveform for radar? Well, let's first of all, just think of it in the frequency domain. We've got the lower frequency components here, which are similar to this signal up here, but we're also going up to higher frequencies, not as big a range as infinite from the delta function, but still we've got a wide frequency band. And let's think about how we can generate this chirp and think of it in relation to the delta function. So this delta function contains all frequencies. And what we can see in the chirp function is those frequencies are now spread out in time. So if we think about the relationship between these two, we can generate the chirp by putting a, an impulse into a filter that has an impulse response like this. Let's think about that. As we said, the low frequency components are delayed by a small amount. The high frequency components are delayed by a larger amount. That's one way to think about the chirp waveform. So why is this good for radar? Well, let's think about it here. We've got our impulse, which we put into a filter, which has a chirp impulse response, this impulse response here being a chirp, and then that gets sent out of the radar into the channel, which is where the reflectors are and the target is. And then what comes back in, and how are we gonna process that signal when we get it back? Well, something that you can do, is when we're thinking about this in the way I just described, where the impulse response of this filter means that the low frequencies are delayed by a small amount and the high frequencies by a large amount, well, then we can think of reversing that process in our receiver filter where we have an impulse response, which is the time reversal of this one, where the high frequency components get delayed by a small amount and the low frequency components get delayed by a larger amount. 
And this is done by a receive filter, which is a time reversal and complex conjugate of the transmit chirp function. So the overall effect will be that all the frequencies end to end will be delayed by the same amount. Now it's not exactly the case that you recover an impulse. Uh, you actually recover something that is uh, a little bit more like a sync function, uh, not exactly an impulse. And the peak of this function comes at a time which is the delay of the round trip time for propagation to the target, Tor, plus capital T, which was the length of time of your chirp function. And although this is not an exact delta function, it still is very much more compressed in time than the time that you spent to send the overall chirp. So you are approximating this ideal case of a delta function. And of course, if there's another target nearby, the other target will be uh, being received, maybe one with a smaller return, uh, will be received at a later delay, and you'll be able to separate out those two targets. So this function here is giving you a trade-off between uh, the ideal case of an impulse, which has unrealistic dynamic range, uh, and the other case of a pulse of a, simply of a sine wave, where it's very difficult to distinguish the different targets. And this is sometimes called pulse compression. This chirp approach is called pulse compression. And you can see why here, because you're sending a pulse over a period of capital T, but by receiving it in this way with a matched filter, you are compressing, if it has this exact form, it, it results in a compression of that pulse uh, into something that looks more like an impulse. Sometimes this is also called intrapulse modulation. I think you can see why, because internal to the pulse, you are modulating the waveform, not sending a straight sine wave. So if this has given you more insights into chirp signals in radars, uh, please give the video a thumbs up. It helps others to find the video. Uh, check out the web page in the description below where there's a full categorized listing of all the videos on the channel. And of course, subscribe to the channel for more videos.